Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk, and welcome to Why You. We have seen that single variable quadratic equations can always be put into the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are constants. This equation states that the value of the quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c must be zero. So the solutions to this equation are those values of x that cause the quadratic function to produce a value of zero. These x values are called the zeros or roots of the function. For instance, the equation 6x squared plus 11x plus 4 equals zero states that the quadratic function 6x squared plus 11x plus 4 must have a value of zero. So to solve this equation, we must find the x values where the function's value is zero. In the previous lecture, we introduced a technique for solving quadratic equations that involves factoring a quadratic function into a pair of linear functions. This technique is based on a principle called the zero product property, which tells us that if we can factor a quadratic function into a pair of linear functions, then the zeros of those linear functions will be identical to the zeros of the quadratic function. Since it is a straightforward task to find the zero of a linear function, we can always find the solutions to the quadratic equation if we can factor the quadratic into a pair of linear expressions. We showed in the previous lecture that there are certain forms of quadratics called special products whose factors can be easily identified. These special products include quadratics that are the difference of squares, and quadratics that are perfect squares. We have already seen how to identify and factor quadratics that are the difference of squares. In this lecture, we will see how to identify and factor quadratics that are perfect squares. Perfect squares are quadratic expressions which can be written either as a plus b quantity squared or a minus b quantity squared. However, there is another form that these perfect square quadratic expressions can take. This form can be produced by expanding the expressions, first writing each of them as the product of two binomials a plus b times a plus b, and a minus b times a minus b, and then multiplying each pair of binomials. Multiplying the first pair of binomials, a times a gives us a squared then a times b is a b. b times a is also a b. And b times b is b squared. We can then combine the a b terms, giving us two a b. Likewise, we can multiply the second pair of binomials. Multiplying the first terms gives us a squared. Then a times negative b is negative a b. Negative b times a once again gives us negative a b. And negative b times negative b is b squared. We can then combine the two negative a b terms, giving us negative 2 a b. So perfect square expressions of the form a plus b quantity squared and a minus b quantity squared may also have the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. When we see a quadratic expression that fits either of these two forms, we know that the expression can be written as the perfect square of the form a plus b quantity squared or a minus b quantity squared. So let's look at a couple of examples of quadratic functions that can be written as perfect squares and find the solutions to the corresponding quadratic equations. We'll start with the quadratic function x squared plus 6x plus 9. Since the middle term of this quadratic is positive, this expression cannot match our second perfect square form 
whose middle term is negative. We can immediately see that the first and last terms in this expression are squares, x squared and 3 squared. So in this example, x corresponds to the first squared term a and 3 corresponds to the second squared term b. Since a and b in this example are x and 3, the 2ab term is 2 times a, which in this example is x, times b, which is 3, or 6x, which matches the middle term of our quadratic expression. Therefore, this expression is in the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Since in this example, the a and b terms are x and 3, this quadratic is equivalent to the quadratic expression x plus 3 quantity squared. So to find the zeros of the quadratic function x squared plus 6x plus 3 squared, or x squared plus 6x plus 9, we can set the two linear functions that are its factors equal to zero to find their zeros. Or alternatively, we can set the function x plus 3 quantity squared equal to zero and then solve for x. When solving an equation like this that equates a squared expression to a constant, the square root property states that the expression that is squared is equal to the positive or negative square root of the constant, which in this case is zero. So solving for x, we see that the function has the single zero, negative three as does the original function x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this quadratic function has only a single root, and thus one x-intercept. Therefore, the solution set of the quadratic equation x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0 contains only a single solution, negative 3. If we wish to check our results, we can substitute this value for x into the quadratic equation to see if it produces a true statement. Substituting negative 3 for x gives us negative 3 squared in the first term, which is 9, and 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Since 9 minus 18 plus 9 is 0, negative 3 is indeed a solution to this quadratic equation. It is an interesting fact that perfect square quadratic functions always have a single root, since their factors are always two identical linear functions with identical x-intercepts. Now let's factor one more example of a perfect square quadratic, 16x squared minus 40x plus 25. To be a perfect square, this quadratic expression must fit one of the two possible perfect square forms. Since the middle term of this expression is negative, this expression cannot match the first perfect square form. As in our first example, we see that the first and last terms in this expression are squares, 4x quantity squared and 5 squared. So in this example, 4x corresponds to the first squared term a and 5 corresponds to the second squared term b.
Negative 2AB is therefore negative 2 times A, which in this case is 4X, times B, which is 5, or negative 40X, which is indeed the middle term of our quadratic expression. So this expression has the perfect square form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Since the a and b terms are 4x and 5, this quadratic is equivalent to the quadratic expression 4x minus 5 quantity squared. Now to find the zeros of the quadratic function 4x quantity squared minus 40x plus 5 squared or 16x squared minus 40x plus 25 we can set the function 4x minus 5 quantity squared equal to 0 and then solve for x. As we saw in the previous example, when solving an equation like this that equates a squared expression to a constant, the square root property states that the expression that is squared is equal to the positive or negative square root of the constant, which in this case is zero. So solving for x, We see that the function has the single zero 5 fourths, as does the original function 16x squared minus 40x plus 25. So once again, the quadratic function has a single root or zero, and thus a single x-intercept. Therefore, the solution set of the quadratic equation 16x squared minus 40x plus 25 equals zero contains the single solution 5 fourths. To check our results, once again we can substitute this value into the quadratic equation to see if it produces a true statement. Substituting 5 fourths for x gives us 5 fourths squared in the first term, which is 25 sixteenths. And 16 times 25 sixteenths is 25. In the second term, 40 times 5 fourths is 200 fourths, or 50. And since 25 minus 50 plus 25 is 0, we have confirmed that 5 fourths is a solution to this quadratic equation. So when we recognize that a quadratic expression matches the form a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared, then we know that the quadratic can be expressed as a perfect square a plus b quantity squared or a minus b quantity squared. The advantage, of course, is that the factors of quadratics that are perfect squares, like the factors of quadratics that are the difference of squares, can be immediately identified. This is why quadratic expressions like this are called special products. However, when a quadratic expression is not a special product, we must use other methods of factoring the quadratic. In the next lecture, we will see how to use a trial and error method of factoring quadratic expressions called factoring by inspection.